Okay, great. Um, Sarah, quickly, do you know if uh, Sarah is joining us as well? Are you just contacting her? Because I think we should wait for her and <laughs> then we can kick things off. I'm going to ask her. One second. Oh, there she is. Okay, amazing. Hi, Sarah. Lovely to see you here. Then I think I'll give us a quick intro and then we'll kick things off. Um, oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for coming to today's um, community call. I'm really excited about today's meeting. Um, and we'll pass over for proper introductions in a minute, just very quickly from my side. Um, today is the bringing together of, of some new members and some older members to have a conversation about um, textile sustainability and specifically to introduce a project idea called the Open Mill. And I will let Sarah and Sarah introduce this project in more detail and themselves shortly. Um, I think this is a topic that really brings together many themes that are currently present in the gig network. So I'm really excited to explore this topic further with you today. Um, for format and proceedings, I would say, I'll, like I said, pass over to Sarah um, from Hilo and Sarah Odu for introductions for themselves and the Open Mill project in a minute. And then after that, I would be super happy if, um, if some of our other members here would like to introduce themselves and maybe some other relevant projects that you're working on. Martin, we chatted recently just via WhatsApp um, in the context of the Horizon proposal we were writing. And you mentioned that you're working on similar ideas in Kenya. So I'd love to hear more about those. Uh, uh, we've chatted a, a little bit last year even about this, so I'm also curious to hear how this could connect to your work. So we'll do a little round after we've had the initial presentations. Um, and yeah, with that, I would like to pass over to Zara and Zara to introduce themselves and the Open Mill project. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much, um, Geraldine, for, for this introduction and for inviting us uh, to this meeting today. It's very nice to meet you all. And um, yeah, so I am a new member of GAG, which is uh, very nice, I'm very happy about it. And um, so uh, going to introduce myself quickly. So I am um, Sara Diaz, I'm the founder of um, um, ELO, ELO it's, um, it's Actually, before we had another name, Studio ELO, and now we transform everything into just ELO, uh, which is a, a company now transforming into NGO. And we focus on the studio in developing open source uh, tools for young creation. So I am myself a textile designer, but with a huge interest in new technology. So, I kind of like a combine these two worlds in one. So I uh, use my skills as a textile designer to develop tools for designers in one hand and also open source, which is very important for, for us because we want to make all our developments accessible to everyone and give the opportunity, not only for the big industry, but to everyone to create their own production environments, and also to use the tools as a, um, like a, the, the tools adjust to the needs of the designers. Designers. Makers. Makers. Oh, I'm oh. giving myself a double, but doesn't matter. And um, so um, what am I saying? Exactly. So that the tools just adjust to the needs. So it's everything hackable, transformable. We can just change the machine, print new parts and like iterate uh, 
on and on with the help of our community, uh, our uh, machines. Um, yeah, that's me. Do you want to introduce yourself, uh, Sarah? Yes, sure. Um, thank you, Geraldine, and to the entire GID team for um, inviting us to share our work. Um, and Sarah is a new member. I'm an almost member. I'm still in the, in the transition stage, but I'll, I'll eventually be a member. Um, but it's really exciting uh, to share our work with you all today. Um, so just a little bit um, about myself and my work. I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria, and I've been working in the fashion industry for about uh, 12 to 15 years. Um, and my role, my background was in brand development and co um, comms. Um, and um, over the last seven to 10 years, I've been sort of working very specifically to help build brands in a very circular sort of way. So I describe myself as saying we build um, circular brands, right? Um, and so what that simply means is just helping brands understand the process a little bit more, helping brands transition from idea to product um, in the most sustainable way possible, um, thinking about um, using what we have access to locally. So that's, you know, in Nigeria or in Africa as a whole, but also finding opportunities to collaborate, um, as I'm doing with Sarah now, um, with um, with um, partners in, in the Global North um, to find solutions around some of the challenges that we might face in our system, in our, um, in our ecosystem, in our industry. Um, and Sarah and I connected um, early last year and we completely saw, immediately saw the, the need to bring these worlds together. Um, I've been working um, so in textiles for, for a while as well. Um, and I've been looking at waste and looking at how to transform that waste into new fibers, been looking at agricultural waste, and I've been looking at how to transform that into, into yarn. And so we connected around those ideas. And again, she's a huge um, proponent of, of open source um, technology. I'm a, a huge proponent of open source technology application. Um, and that is really, again, giving people access to um, tools and systems and technology and ideas and conversations um, as, as easily accessible as possible so that they can be a part of the conversation so that it, um, it becomes free and open for everyone to have some sort of impact. Um, and so we can, I mean, we can launch right into the project. Um, so Sarah and I developed this project called the Open Mill. And essentially what we are trying to do is bridge the gap between our craft-based industry um, in Nigeria and in Africa as a whole um, with the more sort of complex textile industry and sort of finding that middle ground. Um, so what I found having worked in the fashion industry in Africa for over 10 years is um, this desire to experiment a little bit more, this desire to um, create our own textiles. Because um, at the moment, a lot of the brands are e either going into the local markets or local suppliers and finding whatever yarns or um, fabrics or whatever they can find, right? And then you have another group that are basically hand weaving their textiles, you know, in the local traditional way. Um, but are using predominantly polyester yarns, for example. So you can go into the market and they don't even know the difference between polyester and um, cotton, right? Um, and so what I, I, I wanted to do was sort of look at some of these challenges um, and, and look for, for simple and easy solutions around, around them. And that is really just giving the designer the um, access to developing their own um, yarn, their own textile. So basically taking that waste, turning it into new yarns um, that can be then still woven in a local traditional way. So we're not trying to replace um, local traditional elements with more high tech, you know, uh, equipment. We're trying to use those small scale open source technology tools and implement them into the way that we currently are designing. So making that match how we work already. Um, and that's really important because a lot of things that we're adopting from the Global North, for example, will not be copy and paste, but it'll need to be adapted to the local market. Um, and so that's kind of what we are, we're aiming to do. And we want to be able to uh, basically put the power back in the, in the hands of the brands where they have access to um, their own textiles, their own yarn developments. Um, and so that's sort of my my experience um, so far. And I think maybe Sarah can add hers in. Yes. Um, well, you said just wonderful. Um, exactly. Maybe to add something to this, uh, to the project idea is that um, 
we uh, with this technology that we develop in, in ELO, we give the opportunity to scale down industry. So as, as Hara said, uh, we can just um, make it everything smaller and decentralized. This is very important. And uh, uh, give the decision making to the makers and designers. And it's very important for us and for the machine that I developed to um, like a speed up specific pro um, processes like spinning with the help of digital fabrication, but also um, kind of like a highlight in the, the traditional crafts. It's something that we can just combine together. It's not either or, it's a tool and infrastructure that allows um, to like a, to continue existing to develop more traditional um, uh, crafts, like for example, weaving, which is very important in, in Nigeria and also in other countries, in this case in Africa. And um, so the idea is kind of like a tackle these pain points from the local com creative community in this case in Nigeria, and uh, which are, for example, uh, create higher quality yarns, be able to prototype their own materials, material sourcing that they have the decision making on which material they want to use, and of course, reduce uh, waste. And um, we already develop uh, in, in uh, our studio in ELO, the software, like a software to control a small scale spinning machine. So we have also the spinning machine, which is easy to build very fast. So I spent many years uh, trying to make it as simple as possible uh, to use so everyone can use it. Uh, then you create your own on-demand yarn, exactly the amount that you want or with the ways that you want, create your textiles, your garments and so on. And afterwards, you always create waste in production. So you can just take your waste in with our recycling machine, process this waste, open it again into fiber stage and use it for the next collection. So we want to bring this infrastructure, this um, machine chain, production chain, small scale into uh, Nigeria and give it to local makers and designers to create their own, uh, like expand their own design process. And, um, one of, of the goals of this collaboration, this is a, also something very important for that, Sarah and for me as well, is not just, okay, let's reduce waste. It's more about, uh, and also about uh, creating new aesthetics. So with these tools that we have, uh, with these tools that um, <clears throat> are hackable, can we create new new textiles, new structures, new new yarns with new materials. So it's an opportunity to expand um, the design um, challenges and opportunities and aesthetics, as I said, and give also the, the machinery to other people than the industry to redefine the way we understand textiles. So I think this is the more or less the project. And uh, just to uh, end, um, we are looking for, of course, um, uh, funding to make it happen, but also project partners. We're looking for other people that like the idea and maybe want to collaborate with us in different ways. Um, we are open for everything. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you both. Um, brilliant. And I get so excited listening to you when you're presenting. I think we have so much shared value and vision, this idea of open sourcing, democratizing these technologies, and not just, but also to decrease all our carbon footprints, but also to create new opportunities, really, and new innovations. So brilliant to listen to that. And yeah, I'd like to pick up exactly where you left off. So to everybody else in this call, the idea is that um, we are hopefully applying for some NSB project funding for our funding kickoff. Um, Sarah and Zara would like to start a yarn lab, an open mill project in Nigeria. And, um, and as I said earlier, I know there are other members also working in their fab labs or in their maker spaces on similar ideas. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to share some experiences, thoughts and connect the dots. And now knowing you have to go in a few minutes, Anna, 
I'm wondering if you want to quickly introduce yourself and 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 your work, maybe also a little bit what we do at Make and how this connects. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Thank you very much. Um, but also, before I forget, I also just want to flag up um, about um, Jessica Ngema, who is uh, works on the Make project, but um, also is um, very, very interested in sustainable fashion um, and has started up a community called um, Marcele. Um, so I'm sure Jessica would be on this call if it wasn't that she's on maternity leave at the moment. Um, but she will be back in May, and I know that she would be very um, interested indeed to, um, to, you know, to tap into whatever initiatives are, are going on around this. So, um, and I'm in a moment. I'll find her. I'll find her the link to her um, website about Marcelle. Um, and so, the Make Project um, is a. Um, big multi-year EU funded project that um, GIG is, is a part of along with many other um, organizations. And it has a number of different work streams, um, but it's all around connecting maker ecosystems in Europe and Africa um, and helping to build um, sustainability into those systems and infrastructures for distributed production. Um, the piece of work within Make that I've been uh, responsible for is to develop a, an open catalogue of business models, um, which um, has now, we've now got some extra funding through another project to turn that into a website. Um, and the sort of first prototype of that is online at localeconomies.org. Again, I'll post the link in just a moment. Um, so there's... Um, couple of angles in which I'm I mean thank you for your presentations um in your introductions it's a yeah fantastic project super interesting and there's um a few different angles I can see um around collaboration so one is um I'm very interested in documenting and sharing um business models for distributed production um particularly these kind of cases where we can look at um open source machinery um, and how that can fit in with traditional workflows and you know opportunities to kind of improve the um, capacity or capability or quality levels or whatever of traditional artisans and, and helping them to address new markets and things like that. All of these kind of questions I'm massively interested in. So um, I would be very interested to collaborate with you on um, you know, looking at some of those questions. Um, I'm not um, the kind of person who's going to help design a, a machine or the software to, to run it, but um, looking at how it can kind of fit into a supply chain. So my background was in supply chains, um, looking at, and, and the sort of business systems around it is something I'm very, very interested in. Um, I, working with Jessica, who I mentioned before, um, who has a, a special interest in sustainable fashion, um, I, I had done a course last year on systems mapping and I'm interested in starting to figure out how to apply that. And before Jessica went on maternity leave, she and I were working on um, sort of thinking about systems mapping of sustainable fashion um, industry and trying to define like, you know, what are the building blocks that would be needed to create a sustainable industry? Um, like, and, and, you know, what are the bits that are already being worked on and, and where are their gaps and, and so on? So it would also be really interesting to, um, to talk about that with you. Um, so yeah, that's, um, those are the kind of the things that come to mind immediately. Um, and I'd, yeah, very keen to collaborate. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thanks for joining today. Um, so we have one member from Nigeria here, <laughs> and um, and and I'd love if you can, if you're in a position where you can speak, maybe if you want to share a little bit your work, and we can see how this might connect as well. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tuchuku Um. Um, I'm the founder of 
Nigeria's first mega space or first fab lab called Clinton Health Innovation Center. Um, we, of course, we provide um, capacity building, you know, in engineering, in STEM, in innovation. We work with uh, um, secondary schools, universities, um, providing capacity building. We also organize an annual national engineering competition. Um, so we all, I, I also founded another organization, another company, which is into manufacturing for the Advanced Engineering Center. So while the Internet Innovation Center as a maker space focuses more on capacity building and social impact, the Advanced Design Center is a business, you know, that applies the skills that we develop for products, equipment for manufacturers. So um we um so we for the mega space we have um four focal areas. One is STEM. So under under STEM we design and build indigenous STEM kits. And then we use these STEM kits to train secondary school students and, and teachers, teaching them the practical application of the um, subjects they learn in school. You know, in, in Nigeria, as in all, most African countries, we go to school for exam to write and pass his examination. So we don't learn that practical application of the sciences that, you know, that we learn in, in, in school. So that's what our STEM kids try to bridge that gap between the theory and the practical so that the student can have the background to be able to apply those sciences in real life, in creating solutions, building products. That's what the STEM kids do. Then we, um, um, our, another focus area is engineering education. So another engineering education, we um, train engineering students and lecturers, both on campus and in our um, facility. So we train them to acquire modern industry relevant skills that are needed in the industry. And then we have, um, as part of that, we also have a, organized this uh, CWES program. CWES is a six months industrial training composite for all engineering students. So we organize that, we have, you know, um, train engineering students from different universities, you know, in different budgets continuously every year, building their skills to bridge the, the skills gap. Then we also work on hardware startup incubation, where we, you know, incubate, um, hardware startups, you know, help them to develop their ideas into products and into uh, businesses. And then we are also into um, um, job placement where we work with hardware skills, um, 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 hardware talent, and we try to match them to employers who need engineering skills. Um, that's for the, the maker space. And then we organize the national competition called the Nigerian Genius, the popular engineering competition where engineering students from different universities are selected as, as finalists and they spend over two weeks in our facility. They camp, they live and camp in our facility for over two weeks. Within that, that two weeks plus period, we bring industry experts to train and mentor them. And then we give them a challenge to solve. Literally, we find Nigeria's toughest problems, and we give them those problems to solve. So, and they apply their, their engineering skills towards solving our national um, problems in, in, in Nigeria. That, so for the, the other organization, they, um, so besides that, I also founded the hardware community in, the, in Nigeria called um, Hardware and Gear Community, and I'm, I'm leading that hardware community um, in the country. Then um, that's on that. Then the Advanced Design Center focuses on precision, you know, um, fabrication, digital manufacturing. So there we have CNC machines, CNC lids, CNC building machines, injection molding machines, um, and other equipment that we use to actually build products, um, mainly for manufacturers. You know, uh, we build molds, molds, dies. Uh, auto parts, engine parts, and other you know, uh, precision parts for and put all that equipment for uh, manufacturing. So our vision um, is 
to see an industrialized and technologically advanced Africa where there is zero unemployment and zero poverty. We strongly believe that industries, manufacturing, production has a key to employment generation in Africa. And through employment generation, that we can solve the problem of poverty. So our focus is engineering, innovation, and manufacturing to solve Africa's problems of unemployment and poverty. Um, sorry for that long, you know, uh, <laughs> intro. That I'm also, I'm also um, a vice president of, of the Abat Chamber of, of Commerce. Thank you. Let me uh, not take longer time. So this is something interesting to me uh, because I'm very passionate about local production. Um, so anything in Africa, anything I can do, we can do to encourage local production in Africa is my passion. So um, I, I I love this and I love to support it in any way um, that I can. We can support with manufacturing, publication, anything, you know, is, is a passion. Thank you. Wonderful. It's wonderful to hear you talk about your work as well. And um, yeah, I was very much looking forward to introducing you today as part of this call and connecting these dots a little bit because hoping this will just be a meaningful point of connection, you know, with the hardware community you run and the sort of, let's say, adjacent, but hopefully very impactful communities that you both come from that we can maybe do a little bit of service connecting here. So really great. And um, yeah, let's see how we can maybe, I mean, obviously this is the first chance to introduce each other and then which follow-up conversations we can organize to take things further. Also understand you're in a big country, not in the same location, but let's see how we can uh, make things work there. Um, if anybody has any questions and wants to come in between, please go right in. Otherwise, I'm just going to sort of pass around the baton. <laughs> um, and was wondering if Martin, maybe you also, I don't know if you're in a position to speak in this call, but uh, I know that you're uh, also working on similar topics than the Fab Lab Winham or want to in future. So perhaps if you want to introduce your work a little bit as well, Martin, <clears throat> maybe I can invite you to do so. Uh, uh, th thank you so much, Geraldine. Um, of course, my name is Martin Olo, founder of Fab Lab Winam, which is based in Kenya. And uh, um, I, I want to talk about, I will not talk about much of things we do, but I want to talk about how we link what you do currently. Um, of course, I also work with Anna on Open Catalog. So we've been doing a lot of interviews because I'm very passionate about how makerspaces can become um, independent and can, can become sustainable. A lot of makerspaces around the world are struggling. And um, of course, Tochuku is my friend. We've been discussing on how do African makerspaces need to operate? Do they need to operate normally like the other makerspaces? Because our challenges are a little bit unique. So Fab Lab Winam does a number of, um, have a number of programs, but I want to talk about what we call Juakali Plus. In, in East Africa, Juakali means um, local artisans because they work under sun. Jua is sun, Kali is hot. So it's a Swahili word, Jua Kali. So if you talk about a Jua Kali, people just know the artisans. So we, we've been working with local artisans. Of course, I call them the bravest engineers in Africa because they are the people who produce things. So um, working with them, uh, we started a program which we call Gumzo Workshop where we go to where they are and have discussions with them within their workshop. Because if you invite them for a meeting, they won't come. I'm sure even in the fashion industry, you go and tell them that I want to have a meeting with you in such a such a place, they will not come because they are rushing to make money for the day. So our meetings were going within their workshops. So we sit there, have discussion with them. And our intention was basically to help them improve the quality of their skills. I mean, to improve their skill set, to help in the, in the improvement of the quality of the products, as well as encouraging them to use modern tools. But then um, we were looking at what are the low hanging fruits. According to them, their immediate problem is how can we sell our products and services in the state where they are? 
before we talk about improving. So currently Fab Lab Winam has been working on developing a marketplace. And in our development of marketplace, we've been focusing on how do we bring more women in, in that space to be part of this. And this is how we've ended up now having more conversation with women in the industry. And you'll agree with me that in fashion industry, you'll get a lot of women. And right now we work with a, a number of women in, in the artisan area to look at how can they sell their products. But then how do we as a makerspace help in monitoring the quality? So I am very much interested in, in this topic and we are keen to follow it up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martin. And maybe just as a quick interlude as Geek, we're obviously always looking for creative ways of funding things in general. And um, Martin, we had this tiny point of contact over the last Horizon proposal that we just submitted. So now we all have our fingers crossed that we'll win it, which we'll know in June because if we do, then we would have some funding to support a select number of maker spaces and setting up uh, additional infrastructure, machines, or workshops, uh, educational office services, whatever fits to their space for circular fashion and craft. Um, so yes, like I said, fingers crossed that will come in and then hopefully this could also um, help fund some activities in this direction. Um, Mustafa, Matthew, I'm not sure if you're uh, able to speak, but if you are, would you like to share a little bit what you're working on? I'm not sure. Oh, Matthew, are you, please go ahead. Hey. Um... Yeah, uh, nice to be in the call. Um, currently, what we are working for, but first of all, uh, my name is Matthew. To those who uh, might not know me, and I work for Community Creativity for Development, CC4D, uh, a Ugandan and South Sudanese ASCNET hub. Um, just want to give a brief update on what we are working on, uh, more especially in the two areas, that is Uganda and South Sudan. Uh, in Uganda, we are working on developing uh, a mobile digital and uh, repair education kit, uh, which is aimed on empowering youth on uh, access to uh, technology courses, and as well uh, tools and resources in Relations to uh, fixing items. Yeah. Yes. So currently, we are working on developing uh, the offline content because uh, the camp setting is quite unique in that access to internet is quite a issue. So uh, we intend to uh, to and to be used offline using the mobile devices. Men of laptops from Italy. Uh, which is on the way uh, in Uganda, uh, pending some custom clearance. Oh, I think we lost you, Matthew. Matthew, can you still hear me? I can take over a little bit whilst you're reconnecting. Um, Matthew, please come back in any time. Unfortunately, we lost your audio. I'm so sorry. I, oh, there I you are. Lost on it. Please go ahead. I hope I'm audible now. Yes. Perfect. So uh, I was saying the little, I mean, the last bits of my conversation was that we are 
are working on a segment of laptops, uh, which was recently donated for us from uh, SD Micro Electronics from Italy. So currently they are on the way on its way to Uganda, pending clearance uh, today by the Uganda uh, Revenue Authority. And we hope that that, um, you know, get cleared uh, soon as we shall be. Oh no, I'm afraid we lost you again. Oh, I'm so sorry, Matthew. We lost your audio again. Again, please. Operating those uh, devices to into and repair uh, education. Okay, you came back in at the end, but I'm sorry it broke off a little bit in the meanwhile. I did, I posted a link to CC for d to give also a little bit of an impression of the really important work you're doing. And I'll follow up with the AskNet link as well in a minute. Um, sorry if I'm speaking for you now, maybe just to quickly fill in, uh, for, especially for Sarah and Azara. Um, uh, AskNet is another community of, of makerspaces and innovation hubs. And, um, and uh, some of them are working in very uh, specific environments. And um, the camp that Matthew was speaking of was the Rhino camp in Uganda, which is a camp for South Sudanese refugees and uh, and has its own makerspace uh, innovation environment with Platform Africa and, um, and other actors working out of the space with this community creating their own innovations and technologies so it's a really great work that we're, they're doing and Matthew's also kind of spearheading the whole right to repair movement <laughs> in you know, East Africa which is fantastic and also unlocked that we are having a panel on this topic with the German Federal Minister for Environment at Republica. So that's going to be super cool and we can see how we can connect some of the themes that we're talking to uh, to that panel and hopefully also lock down that minister <laughs> to support a lot of our work <laughs> in that context. Um, so that's really great. Yeah. Um, Mustafa, if you want to share, also just please come in um, and feel free to speak if it's possible. Yes. Nice to see you. Sorry. A while actually, since we met. You're a little bit quiet. Is it? Oh, am I audible now? Now it's good. All right. So, yes, uh, it's been a while, a long time since we met on call. And uh, I can see a lot of new faces here. I'm Mustafa Tauda, also a gig member for the past years who has also been active in the network and also running in mega spaces and fostering innovation as well here in Ghana. I think, yeah, one of some of these calls are uh, or some of the interesting areas I normally want to listen to, especially when it comes to open source technologies like this. And uh, uh, I am actually situated at a place in Ghana called the weaving basket of the country, where people use a lot of yarns in weaving, in weaving smocks, smock uh, textiles. So most of the time they, they import some of these yarns from outside. So uh, I was like, well, this call is something that I need to be on and then get to know much more about uh, this and know how best we can deploy. Sorry, my phone just fell off and know how we can deploy some of this open source technology in our area to see if we can probably create some of these yarns that are being used here by the local women in producing this smock textiles here in the Upper West region of Ghana. So I think uh, it's actually something very, very interesting that uh, I'm seeing and then I would like to explore much more maybe after the call i'll take a look at some of the things we are doing and also if i can reach out 
to some of you. By the way, uh, we've also been working on this project that is coming up here called the Warrior Festival, where people would display a lot of textiles in the Upper West region. I think uh, I'll check to see if I can get a link and then put it here. And then, yeah, we can follow up on it. Yeah, so Nani have mega space. I think uh, we are also trying to diversify our activities to see how we can also get into the textile industry because uh, our area where we are located, you know, is regarded as the weaving basket of the country. They weave a lot of textiles, handmade textiles actually. So the yarns and the materials they use for, like I mentioned earlier on, are all being imported. And funny enough, they do, people do cotton. People do cotton farming here. And uh, there are natural silk cotton to that they harvest here. Normally they put it in sacks and then they use as pillows. And there are other fiber materials here that uh, people can actually turn into some of these uh, textile items. So it's, it's good to be part of this call to explore what uh, Hilo is doing. And uh, I think, yeah, uh, I'm very excited to be here as well. My name is Mustafa. I'm the Makerspace lead actually for Noni Hub. But uh, currently I'm in the capital, Accra. It was a Makerspace I was working in a university here called Academic City University, you know. Academic City is one of the leading universities in the country and they've been able to put up a mega space called Make Lab in the school where students come in to actually learn 3D printing, laser cutting, we have woodworking as well here. Yeah, so did they really get hands-on experience in some of these things to be able to help them in their project work? And also the Make Lab as part of its programs organizes a tech expo, organizes uh, programs such as uh, projects that actually seek to transform student project work into business. And also they have incubation programs as well. So. Over the past few years, students have been bringing up a lot of projects in areas of agriculture, in areas of arts. And also, I think recently they were exploring how to use 3D printing in textiles, you know. So it's, it's, it was a very interesting field, actually. So, yeah, we are all on board. I think we are all like minded individuals here who are. Uh, whose activities are intersecting with each other. So I think it's it's happy to meet everyone here once again. And this is a very brief introduction of some of the things that we do. Lovely. Thank you so much, Mustafa. I'm so excited to hear about this uh, makerspace at a school that you were speaking of because there are such interesting examples of this popping up in different corners of the world. And um, yeah, and that's another very, very interesting topic. Okay, it's telling me my internet connection is unstable. I hope you... Can all still hear me? <laughs> Good. Um, so yeah, so now we've had a little round of introduction. And like I said earlier, I think today is a good opportunity just to get to know each other a little bit and uh, each other's work a little bit. Maybe um, uh, Sarah, uh, maybe if you want to share, what would be good like step stones, ways to continue? Obviously, we're super happy to share everybody's email address. Like I said, we're engaging together and try to find some funding to um, maybe start up a, a pilot maybe also it would be interesting i don't know if you have numbers like how much is it to construct uh one of your machines and and some like experiences like that obviously it'd be amazing to have three or four different uh make spaces doing this and like comparing also the different use cases the different kind of materials being made with it so yeah maybe you can share a little bit more your thoughts on that yes that would be amazing actually um so um we have different machines so um like the carding machine and recycling machine the we developed now the last one is a drafting machine, a machine that prepared the fiber in the right way to be able to spin it. And then we have the um, uh, spinning machine. So for for example, for the spinning machine, um, I'm talking about European prices, right? Euro. 
uh, prices, but um, if you have access to 3D printing, so if you have your own printer at the makerspace, which is, that's why I think this call is just fantastic for us because yeah, here in, I'm, I'm based in Berlin, it's really easy to print something. Like it's not a problem, it's printers everywhere, universities, even I don't know, libraries and uh, museums and so on. But I can imagine in other countries it's not that accessible. So it's really important to find partners with this um, technology infrastructure like you guys. Um, so if you have a 3D printer, then the cost of the materials is around 300, 400 euros which is not that much for a production, like it's cheaper than actually a 3D printer. Um, yes, and the other machines is around, like, um, if I think a little bit, yeah, around this amount of money, each machine, which is, um, yeah, quite affordable, but um, it's everything hackable again. So if you have other type of motors there or other type of uh, parts, you can just adjust the the 3D printed parts to put your motors there or the parts that you uh, want to use. So it's everything adjustable. Um, but as, as I said, it's around 300, between 300 and 600 euros, everything. We work as I put my um, our website on the, on the chat so you can take a look in our machines how they look like and they are quite simple so we use profiles uh, aluminum profiles and this like a kind of like a lego system to quickly build the machine and um yeah so i think it's very interesting to especially with the colleague from uh, nigeria um because now we are starting in in nigeria but of course, we want to expand to everywhere. Like, I create the our idea was kind of like a create a network, like a different small um, production environments. So, not every city, not every village needs a machine, but like you kind of connect to each other and um, create a, a lot of small uh, production environments. So um, exactly, this is the idea, and uh, it would be amazing to connect with you, uh, with some of you, and maybe to have a, a call together, and we can give you more detailed description of the project. We're writing the proposal uh, for funding, so maybe, yeah, we, I would love to contact you and maybe start a, a conversation. Right, Sara, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's been really great to, to hear from everyone and to see um, what's happening um, in these maker spaces across Africa. Um, I think, yes, the, the obviously being able to speak um, with, um, I think he's going up, oh no, with, with Tochu would be great because obviously we're both in Nigeria. Um, he's in the East, I'm in the West, Southwest. Um, but it'd be good to have a conversation and just to see where we could meet. Because one of the things that we were talking about was definitely creating a space yeah. or partnering with um, someone that already has a space. Um, but obviously, because you know the center of, of fashion and the center of where everything is, is happening is in Lagos, we'd have to figure out how that would work. But also Aba is like center of production as well. Um, if you're in Aba, I think they said you might be in Aba. Um, but I think I think that would be really great to sort of see what what those um, and also um, Sarah and I were talking about sort of like working with people who have those skills in terms of like setting up locally, right? Like who has already has those technical skills that could support in the actual, um, I guess, assembling of the machines and then ensuring that they can be used over time and repaired if necessary, or even create you know ways around developing that. And then also having, uh, I think, was it Anna? Anna was it was it was great to hear from her as well, just because I think a lot of the work that we're doing needs that sort of business development elements, that sort of support where one of the things that I've been thinking about is how we don't have enough data. Like in the fashion industry, there just isn't enough data around our processes, the way that we work, you know, just there's just a lot of missing information. So I love that because every she mentioned like five different things or four different things, and they were all sort of like. How do we like track and trace like what's already happening? How do we develop? How do we build from there? How do we 
um, look at, and I think it was very data specific, which I thought was quite interesting to kind of like what the project would need to sort of like um, solidify it a little bit and say like, this is what we're doing, but this is how we can quantify it as well. Um, and then, yeah, to be able to see what's happening in, 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 in Kenya and also in Ghana. Ghana is super close to, we have, I didn't even realize there was like a weaving basket area. Um, I know there's like, we do a lot of work with artisans that are weaving baskets and they're using straw and, and raffia and things like that in Ghana. Um, but in terms of actually seeing that there is another space that is available for us to basically even take these machines that you, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they will have so much waste <laughs> in terms in those areas that, that can be transformed, you know? Um, so it's really, it's really great to see that there are lots of synergies and there are lots of connections across, all, you know, the members that are present today. Um, so that, yeah, that's a definite plus for us. Lovely. Thank you both. I mean, so then maybe just to also recap next steps from my side, like I said in the beginning of the call, we're looking at, uh, oh yeah, Mustafa, please you go ahead first and then I'll tie things up. All right. So, uh, am I, I wanted to just find out about something. Uh, I think, do you have a sort of like a catalog of the machines and then the bill of materials and the process involved? maybe on your website or something, because I was trying to look up to that on my computer right yeah. now. And in, I a documentation? Hello? A, a, do you mean a um, machine documentation of the machine? Is it the machine I document? Can, yes. I can put it on there or here. It's um on, on GitLab. Okay. This uh, platform for open source projects. Uh, great point, Mustafa. So I would take that link also, and I would include that in the documentation of this call. Um, so we'll make the recording available to members internally in case they couldn't attend today and want to follow up. And we can also share the link to the machine documentation. And one next step will be that we said we're going to try to apply for some funding for a kickoff in uh, the and, and and this is what this sort of in times of person uh, time, um, Sarah and Sarah would be focused on setting up this uh, yarn lab in Nigeria, which can be connected also to an existing uh, makerspace or fab lab. And in parallel, I would say if there are other members from other spaces interested in building these machines to expand their uh, portfolio and services, then that's something we can definitely look into seeing how we as gig can support but also how uh, Hilo and how Sarah can support in terms of knowledge <laughs> and and how, again, we can in turn find money to support that as well and and just kind of take it step by step a little bit. And in case GIG uh, wins this larger funding, then of course we have more opportunities to support this in different spaces as well. So we can kind of have a little, yeah, sort of uh, step by step approach um super happy to cross connect everybody share everybody's emails and and then also be part of follow-up calls if anybody's interested in yeah taking one of these next steps then does that sound good for everybody thank you very much Geraldine for organizing this call yes. lovely thank you for everybody for attending it was lovely to see you all and I'm excited about um yeah doing work together on this so yeah i hope you will have a lovely rest of day and soon yeah thank you thank you so much everyone bye bye thank you bye bye yeah thank you everyone um bye bye bye